Hey, what's up, podcast? It's Jeff, and you are listening to a special bonus episode of Teach Better Talk. This is audio pulled from one of our daily drop-ins. That's right, daily drop-ins are back every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time over on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. This is happening from November 23rd all the way to December 18th, so join us on any of the social media platforms. We are at Teach Better Team for our daily drop-ins. We're here to support you answering questions, talking about fun stuff, bringing on special guests, anything you need, we're here for you. Join us for the daily drop-ins. Let's get into this special bonus episode. Enjoy. Good morning, world. It is Dave Schmidow and the amazing, which way do I point? I get this wrong every day. The amazing Jamie <laughs> Fowler White joining you for the Daily Drop In. It's the last week for the Daily Drop Ins, and we got an absolutely spectacular person joining us. So go get that last cup of coffee, sit down, get cozy, and settle in. The next hour is going to be inspirational. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. That music is like the best alarm clock in the world. You hear that music and you're just like, okay, it's time to start my day. And I'm going to do it with a smile on my face because the daily drop-in is happening, right? There's really no better way to start your day. At least no better way that I can think of. I got no, there Jamie on the screen, coffee in my hand, teach better music in my ears. I mean, whew, happy Monday to all. <laughs> so if you are joining us this morning, show us some love in the comments. Let us know who's here so we can say hi to you. We can click your fun little name and introduction and throw it up on the screen and you'll be famous just like Jamie here. So Jamie, thanks for getting up so bright and early to join us today. There's no problem at all. It is a Monday morning though, but it's the last one for oh, most right. educators around the world. Excited. That's right. The last last Monday of 2020 for having to do this thing. So a lot of different ways to think through that mindset. Uh, Jamie, before we dive into that, because I know you are like this mindset um, <laughs> guru. I'll, I'll put it out there. I'll say you're a guru. You, you have this way of always making me smile and reframing things and uh, feeling better about life. But do you just do you mind taking a couple minutes? Let the world know who are you and where are you, Jamie? Oh, absolutely. Uh, so my name is Jamie Fowler White. I This is my 23rd year in education. I spent uh, 10 years in the classroom, 10 years as an instructional coach, and this is my third year as an assistant principal. Uh, in addition to that, um, I have my National Board Certification. Um, I originally certified in 2008 and I recertified in 2017. Um, I write books for educators, um, have a podcast. Um, and I do, I write for Teach Better. I have a, a Better Mindset blog series. So, I mean, I just like helping educators. It's just fun for me. You do all the things, you do all the things. So that, that's so cool. So I'm, I'm looking at the little tally. I don't know if you can see it, but we have people watching on literally all the platforms right now. So again, let us know who's here and uh, throw some questions out here for, for Jamie. She is absolutely phenomenal. Let us know what you're thinking or what questions you have for her today. Otherwise, I'm just going to steal the show because I'm like a sponge. When Jamie is here, I soak up everything that she is putting out there. So Jamie, um, National Board Certification, I want to start with that. Uh, there, NBCT, this amazing designation, uh, this past weekend I saw a lot of teachers celebrating that they got their National Board Certification, either renewals or they were, they were approved for it. What is National Board Certification? So National Board Certification is um, it's basically like a doctorate uh, for teachers is, is how I look at it. And so what you do is uh, you have the opportunity to study your own practice 
Um, and so, yes, you just take a real deep dive into um, your teaching, how you get to know your students, um, data, <clears throat> I mean, you name it. And what it does is it forces you to think about what can I do better um, to reflect on your practice. And you you literally have to, you videotape yourself and you actually look and you break down every aspect of your teaching, what your interactions look like uh, between the students, what the students' interaction looks like um, between each other. Uh, and you write about not only what you saw in those moments, but the next time that you teach that, what will you do differently? And so it's, um, I call it, I, I thought of it as the best professional development that I've ever done. Um, mm -hmm. Because most times when you sit in a session, people are telling you to do this, 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 and this. But it's rare that you actually are studying yourself and you can immediately see um, those changes that take place uh, within your own practice. And it teaches you to look at teaching from a different lens. Um, once you begin to do that, like you automatically do that every day and you can't really, you can't help it. It makes you wonder why everybody can't think that deeply about their own practice. But I just don't know why we don't do more professional development where teachers get insight on themselves or to teach them how to reflect on their own practice. And so it is one of the best things that I've ever done. And um, I just remember my first year of teaching my sister took me to um, the intro session. She was like, come with me. Let's go to this session. And so I went in there. And when they were talking about um, the five core propositions of um, National Board and what accomplished teaching looks like, I was so disappointed when I when I left because they said I had to wait um, until my the end of my third year of teaching. It was just my first year of teaching. and so. I think that that made me just a better educator because I began to study um, to see what an accomplished educator looked like, what I should be um, working towards. And as a new teacher, it was the best guidance that I could have had. Wow, that's so cool. So cool. It, you know, I see somebody else that's joining us right now, Lindsay Titus. I think. Hi, Lindsay. Cares, right? <laughs> <laughs> when Lindsay's here, the, the party's starting. Uh, you and Lindsay share that mindset of just this power of reflection and this ability to to really critically look yourself in the mirror and say, this is who I am, but this is what I want to become in this quest to constantly get better. You you exemplify that teach better mindset of getting better every single day. And I think it's so powerful. And the fact that you reflect on this and say, this is something that all educators really need to do, whether or not you get the the, the national board certification or not. The power of reflection. Well, when we're doing this drop-in today, what is the date? December 14th, uh, I think. Mm -hmm. We've got two weeks left in 2020. Thank God. <laughs> this is an amazing opportunity for us to all reflect. I'm, I'm a big believer in New Year's resolutions and starting mm -hmm. fresh every single year. But I use the month of December to truly establish my baseline mm -hmm. and figure out where I need to go and where I need to grow. Are you a New Year's resolution uh, person? I make resolutions all year. Um, I think I do those normal ones that everybody does. I'm gonna eat better and then I'm gonna <laughs> right. to take better care of myself and those types of things. I never keep those though. I never keep those. Let, um, let me ask the people that are watching. If you're watching mm -hmm. this, tell What's me, your New Year's, Year's resolution? resolution? Yeah. yeah. Tell, first of all, are you a New Year's resolutions person? Mm -hmm. it, does it stick for you? And if you are, what resolutions do you have? I'm, I'm curious. So throw those in the comments for us, but sorry, go ahead. Jenna. Yes, please yeah, throw those in, in. throw those in. Morning, Ray. And, oh. and Nikki says Nikki good morning here. to you as well. <laughs> Hi, Nikki. How are you? Have a great day at school. Oh. Sorry, I completely cut you off. So <laughs> New Year's oh. resolutions. You say you, you do the, the standard mm. ones of better, I better do. care of yourself and I better. Do. Because self-care is so important. Um, so my New Year's resolution for this year is to continue all of the self-care habits that I started um post-pandemic. Um so um 
I just realized, and my son would tell me all the time, mom, you and dad just work all the time. He's like, I'm not sure I want to work for a living. He said, y'all never break. Um, and so um, when the pandemic hit, I started being intentional about that um, family bonding time and planning uh, fun activities and games just to make him see since we were all in the house for 24 hours a day when they shut us down, just to see that we really don't work all day. You just are upstairs playing your game when we're actually having fun. But I've been, um, I just wanted him to see the other side of us. And so now we um, work um, jigsaw puzzles and we just keep one out and we work on it periodically. Uh, we do little uh, games. Uh, I've intentionally carved out some time just to talk to my child so that he can get that socialization because we are kind of isolated in the house. Um, and so, and I write because it's fun. Um, yeah. yeah. That's, that's so good. And Lindsay, Lindsay Titus said that she sets a word for the year. And I know what her 2020 mm -hmm. was, but I'm wondering if she already has thoughts on 2021. So Lindsay, let us know what you're thinking there. And Ray's goals, yes. the first goal, Ray, you got to set your standards way higher. Be more like Dave, fun, humble, and ambitious. Obviously, maybe your first goal should be get to know the real Dave a little bit better because I think that goal will change. But the second one, Ray, I completely mm -hmm. agree with. Be more like Jamie, caring, passionate, calming. So agree. I so agree. I want to be like, you, you just have this like Zen-like quality about you, Jamie, where I feel like you don't ever get rattled. You even talk about 2020, this pandemic hit, and you're like, okay, that's all right. Let's just sit down and do some jigsaw puzzles. Let's play some games. I'll use this as an opportunity to connect with the kid a little bit more. And the rest of us were running around with our hair on fire. And you're like, no, I, I, I got this. It's, it's okay. It's okay. I'll just focus on my priorities. I love that about you. Yeah, I've never been the... Um... I don't run and hide. I, I I don't really get rattled as much as most people, probably because of mm, some of my life experiences. Um, my dad used to always tell us that um, we need to make sure that we take time to enjoy the moment. Um, and we would be work, work, working, and he would ask me, okay, so what are you, where are you going on vacation? When are you going to take a break? Um, and so... I just try to remember that. And um, I mean, it's no fun if you're just working all the time. I mean, you got to have some fun sometimes. You know, it's a true story. True story. And Erin says, Good morning. Good morning to Erin. She also, she also said she's super glad to be able to jump on here and hear you, Jamie. I mean, that, that was her focus. So she saw Jamie's next time here. So, awesome. And Christy says, Good morning to you as well. And, and to answer my question from Lindsay Titus, she does have her word picked up, but because she's so good at this game, she's going to make us wait for it. Well done. Mm. Well done. Making Madeline Hunter proud with that anticipatory set, making us wait on it. Or that's a nice Dave Burgess hook, too. Just throw it out there. It's like the package is all wrapped up, and now we got to wait to open it up, Lindsay. That's not fair. Um, but you said, <laughs> you said life um, is meant really to be lived. It's not meant to be worked. I, I hear you there. I hear you. But I'm going to be honest with you. I struggle with that, especially right now in December. Right now in December, I feel like I'm just going a thousand miles an hour. I'm either wrapping presents, buying presents, working to be able to pay for presents, working to finish out things for 2020, um, helping educators everywhere. I just feel like it is nonstop right now. And I'm justifying it to myself saying I'm working super hard now so that when we get to the end of the year, I can take some time off. Uh, do you have that same mindset where you work all in so that when you choose this intentional time of rest, you can rest? Or do you try to find this balance, harmony thing all day, every day? I've been trying to find the balance every day. Um, it is a little difficult on some days, um, but I try to take a little time every day uh, to do something that I enjoy, even if it's just about 20 or 30 minutes. You could do it first thing in the morning. Um, you could do it right before you go to bed or as soon as you get home from work. Um, but you have to be intentional. You're going to have to close the door to this office you're in, go outside and just say, when I'm in this space, I'm not going to work at all. So I want. So what are you doing for fun, Dave? What are you doing? 
<laughs> well, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so you, you're, you're calling me out on it right now. Uh -huh. See, I, I jokingly tell people that, that I run um, and that's my fun, but it, running, I'm going to be very honest with people. I hate running. The really? first mile of every run is miserable. The last mm. mile of every run is miserable for me. Like I, I despise starting and I despise the home stretch. I think it's because I'm so competitive. I can't even settle into my moment of Zen until wow. I'm a mile in. But the reason I run, it's really twofold. One, because nobody else in my family runs. And it gives me an opportunity to say, I, mm -hmm. I'm going to get out. And on Saturday mornings, I mm -hmm. go for a nice long run because mm -hmm. nobody's on the devices and they're all up being crazy. And I, I'll just go to get away. But after I get past that first mile and get out of my own headspace, I can just settle mm -hmm. in and just think and reflect and do a whole lot of goal setting. So it, that would be one thing I do, but it's, it's not necessarily relaxing for me. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that, that needs to be a goal for me in 2021 is to find some things just to settle in and relax. Even before the pandemic, I didn't have like a bunch of guys I would just go hang out with or anything like that. So that, that needs to be my focus is finding something to just settle into. I, I know that you write a lot. Is that, your, is that your, is that your it relaxation is, therapy? It is, my, it is my relaxation therapy. It is. Uh, and I write like all the time. I've always been uh, writing like for work, um, but for pleasure, when I can sit down and I get into like that, that, that zone, that focus, um, or what they call like that heightened level of creativity where you're doing it with such automaticity that you just don't even think about anything else in the world. And yeah. so my suggestion to you would be to think about um, what activities do you do where you get into that zone and you think about nothing else in the world. And that's what you need to be doing for yourself. Okay. So in a second, I'm going to geek out on that because you just, you hit something with me that, that resonates. But I want to point out some of our other people joining us. Chad, Chad Ostrowski is joining us. And I, I well, hey, Monday, I think Monday, if you're following the plan, Chad, is supposed to be a rest day. So I hope that you did not just finish up a nice long run, but we'll see. But he agrees with me. That first mile sucks, which is crazy. It's the first mile. You feel like you would have all this energy and stamina, but Samantha points out an interesting point. The first mile is, is always hard in everything, which is so true. You know, for somebody that that writes, you know, I, I can imagine that when you sit down and think, OK, I'm going to write something just trying to figure out how do I start this? What topic do I have? What What is going to be the big hook that draws people in? It's it's the first the beginning of anything can be tough. You, but you talked about settling into that zone or that flow state back 10 years ago. Now, when I got my doctorate, I did an entire dissertation all about flow. I'm, here's the geek out part. Mihai Chicks and Mihai. That's a name I want you to try to say mm -hmm. 10 times fast. Mihai Chicks and Mihai <laughs> is the guy that, that wrote all about flow, that idea of just going into something where you forget about the world. Um, mm -hmm. It's like what LeBron James has when the basketball hoop looks like the size of a garbage can and you're just out there killing life. Mm -hmm. But you have to do things repetitively until you, until you get into flow. For me, it probably is why that first mile sucks because I haven't hit flow yet. I got to get to mile two, three, four before I can start chugging along. Uh, but I'm wondering, it, do you think that that's why so many people at like New Year's resolutions or they set their goals, these goals for themselves, give up on them early because that first mile sucks and they say, this is just too hard. I can't do this. Or the writing, I can't sit down and write this because that first paragraph is just too hard and they don't get themselves past that point. I believe so. Um, it's always hard. Um, I was writing a chapter on yesterday and I started it three weeks ago mm. and I just couldn't figure out where to go with it. And so um, I've started four chapters and then I'll write a little bit and I'm like, I'll just have to think about it for a little while. And then um, it's always in the back of my mind. And but when I finally figure out the thing that I really want to focus on, I, I always just pass by. Like I could sit there for a whole day and I don't think about anything except for that. And I have to stay there until I get that complete uh, thought out. And once I do it, it's just the best feeling in the world for me. And so that's why I think um, I think we just need to just kind of keep going. If you know that that's your thing. Um, 
you're supposed to try to create those moments over and over and over again. And that's how you'll make something that's just the most beautiful thing in the world. Um, so I think so. And Lindsay Titus coming in again, you, you two are like this dynamic mm -hmm. duo. You guys are dropping together. It's like what's happening here. But Lindsay writes, I think resolutions don't work because we often try to change our behavior by changing our environment instead of changing our inner mindset, which is really what drives behavior change. That's, I mean, that's the basic gist of it is we try to control all the other things as opposed to looking deep inside. But you are this queen of introspection. You, the reason you, you chase national bird certification is because of the introspection and the reflection that would take place. So talk, talk to me a little bit, Jamie. How does this work mm -hmm. for you? So you wake up in the morning and you say, I'm going to be better today. I mean, it's, it's a good thought. Is it, is, is it one of those Stuart smiley moments where you look in the mirror and say, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me? Or do you take it a step, a step further and do you have things that you put into place? Speak to educators out there. What can they be doing right now? Oh, to okay. So one thing that I do to start my day is um, I have like um, my um, Alexa, my Amazon Echo, and I have like this morning routine that I planned out for myself. And so it starts off with uh, funny things like I'll have like a joke of the day or I'll have like uh, the, mo the weirdest moment in time. Um, but I intentionally made that morning routine in with a podcast where I learned something um, so that every day I start my day making myself better. Um, and so I just think you're you just have to be intentional about your morning routine. Uh, my husband listens to books. Uh, my son will alternate between listening to books and his favorite um, gaming music because he he likes that because that's fun for him. And so you just have to think about what are you going to put in your day to make sure that you're improving yourself. Um, I have uh, quotes within my morning routine, so I get like at least one quote a day. Um, there is um, one thing that uh, talks about um, things I can do to make myself better. Like one was drinking more water and just things, just regular old things that you think about like, oh yeah, I might do that today, maybe not. Um, but I'm very particular about um, the different aspects of um, that morning routine. It only takes me, takes me about 20 minutes to listen to it. Um, but every day it makes me start my day off on the right foot. And if I'm rushing during the day, I find myself, as soon as I get home, I'll um, say, uh, I say, Alexa, good morning. And she just does my whole routine, no matter what time of day it is. Um, First of all, I'm going to apologize to everybody that might be just listening to this. If you're, I'm going to spell it, A-L-E-X-A -E device is now trying to pick up what Jamie, what commands Jamie is giving it. And oh. it, you're trying to tell it, pause, pause, pause right now. I apologize. That's on Jamie. <laughs> because I know there are devices all around the world right now responding to her command. So maybe just tell their devices to do something. Tell them, tell them to, <laughs> Alexa, play Jamie Fowler White's podcast. Alexa, yeah. <laughs> think, do, do, uh, give me some yeah. good music, whatever. But if you're going to say that word, give it a positive command, Jamie. All right, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love it. Oh, I forgot about that. I don't have one in the room with me right now. Otherwise, she would have already started my morning routine again. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be an equal opportunity as well. Siri, play Jamie Fowler White's podcast. Just, just to make sure whatever device you've got oh, right now goodness. is responding. Oh, oh sorry. Go goodness. Ahead, I love it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, so that would just be my advice. Um, and sometimes you break a New Year's resolution because it wasn't something that you really wanted to do you just it was just something the first thing that popped in your head and said oh you know what i'm going to stop eating red meat this year oh, i'm going to give up cokes uh, i'm going to give up bacon um, and so really i think we should really think about um what we actually need to change why we need to change it and um just think through those reasons because if it really is a behavior change that we need to make we will work for it if we really want it. Yeah, that's true. And first of all, Samantha said her device kept going off. So well done, Jamie. It did work. I, I love that. It raised me lots of applause and clapping. Lindsay Titus calling out your mic drop already. Every day I start my day making myself better. I mean, that's that's the goal. It's not about just 
surviving every day, wake up and try to thrive. But I, I love what Aaron says here as well. Being willing to pause and recognize that it's not giving up is very valuable. It, there is a difference between hitting pause and then hitting stop or start over again. And I know this because when I go on road trips and my kids are watching a DVD, if I accidentally hit stop instead of pause, my kids lose their ever loving mind because now they feel like I've got to start all over again, dad, or I don't know the exact spot. If you pause it, when you come back to it, you can just pick up where you left off. I think that's so smart, especially as we're, for a lot of us entering this last week of 2020, and we're going to have this moment of pause for a couple of weeks. And you and I were talking before we started that I'm a little anxious that come January 4th, when my kids have to go back to school and I'm fully virtual, I'm going to have to reteach everything to them again and get them restarted. But it's probably not going to be that way. For them, it might just be a pause. It's probably not a reset or a start over. It's just in my adult mind, I'm looking at it as, oh my gosh, I got to start all over again. Um, so can, what, what is your routine going to look like over the holidays when you're off? Do, I mean, first of all, let me, let me pause this. Let me pause, use that word. Do you get two weeks off? Is that your goal is to have two weeks to just be still? Or do you have things that you're doing? I know you gave me that look. Not work things. <laughs> not work things. Um, my boss is really good about making sure that we actually take a pause. Um, and the last thing we do before we actually leave campus before any break is we talk about what we're going to do that is not related to work. Um, and we try to be intentional about making our staff tell us something that you're going to do that is not work related. Um, so that way. Uh, your mind is actually already set on, this is what I'm gonna do to take care of me. Um, for this two week break though, I'm probably still gonna be thinking about work. I'm never really able to all the way turn it off. Um, so what um, I'll probably do the first day is make a list of all of the things that I need to remember to do when I get back to work. And that's what I do to help me. I make a list and say, when you get back, these are the things that are still on your plate that you need to focus on. I write them on a post-it note and I leave them on my computer monitor. And then I'm able to kind of turn it off because when I get back, I, those are the reminders that will make all of the things that I was working on, all those projects that were not quite finished, they'll remind me that this is where you were um, in that, in the stage of that, um, that work for my son. Um, I was talking to him yesterday uh, about his workload. And so he's taking four college classes and three AP classes. And we've been trying to work on his management of his time. Uh, and so his devices sometimes work, sometimes they don't. So we got him multiple devices. So he always knows if his computer doesn't work, that he can open up his class on his telephone. And if that doesn't work, he can get my iPad, my husband's iPad, an extra laptop that's in the house. We had to make some processes for him just to make sure because he had anxiety about, I'm going to miss 30 seconds of class, not just any moment. Like he wants no moments of class. I, my fear is that some districts, you know how they make you change your password like every 90 days or so? Yeah. And it's like an automatic thing. So my fear is that when children go to log on to the computer after Christmas, that everybody's going to have to change their password all over again. Um, and I, because we are working on systems that were really made for adults and not children, and those are those automatic things. And we'll, Will your children know how to change their password? Will they even remember what their password is when they get back? They won't remember how to log on, which team to log into. Like there's so many different um, aspects of that. Um, as an administrator, I think we maybe need to send out a message to remind parents, okay, make sure that you have the your child's device plugged up and they have all their materials for school, like those type of things. Because I think that parents are really gonna try to unplug as well. Um, because we have like, if you have smaller children, then you sometimes have to go and see them three or four times a day and just think about just the break and how relieved you'll be that you don't have to wake up and go in there and check and see if their device is working right. 
I still find myself doing that. And my child is 16. He'll be 17 next month. And I still wait to see if all of his things are working before I walk out the door every morning. Like, I don't know how we can turn that off, but we'll really just be, just think of it as the first day of school all over again. And then if your mind is already there, then anything that goes on, it won't even matter. So many smart nuggets. And first, I want to focus on the last thing you said. Then I want to circle back to what some of the, mm -hmm. the other things. I, I think that's so much wisdom. If school leaders, parents, whatever. If you don't want January 4th to cause the same level of anxiety that the day after Labor Day did or whenever your first day of school was, set yourself up. And just, like you said, just write down your passwords now. Get yourself set up so that you don't lose all of that zen that you work so hard to <laughs> recover for the next two weeks. You're taking some downtime so you can rest, relax, rejuvenate. Don't get yourself all stressed out over password issues when you come back. It's such a small little tangible thing that I think we can all do. And it's smart. So create your own little spreadsheet, Google form, sheet of paper, a Lindsay Tide strategy, post-it notes, just post them. Figure out those passwords now so that it's that much easier in January. But I'm going to go back to something you said early on about the whole brain dump idea and how you're going to be looking at all these things and writing them down. I'm going to be very transparent. I can't work that way. It causes me anxiety to shut down, like to, to take to think about having a week or two of just pushing things off. I know it's so smart and so practical and everybody gives me that advice that sometimes you just need to take some time just to sit still. But that causes so much anxiety for me. I live and breathe in my calendar. My calendar is like my post-it notes. When when I have something happening, it gets calendarized for me, whether it's an activity or something to do or um, just some, something that's actionable. It goes in my calendar. And sometimes I'm shifting dates on things, but I have to be in my calendar. And every day I feel like I have to be checking some things off of my list that I got done. Otherwise, I feel like I'm just wasting time. Like I can't sit back and enjoy a family movie or enjoy a football game or in the summertime, even sit in my hammock if I feel like there are jobs and things that are out there lingering. And I, I don't know if that makes me strange or if that makes me normal. I, I don't know, but I, I have to believe there are other people out there like me. Mm -hmm. So what I am intentional about doing is every day I sit down and have conversations with the other people in my world to make sure that they are on my calendar as well. That it's not just my tasks, that I have time on my calendar to spend time with my four kids, my wife, whatever the case may be, because my schedule is not more important than my people. So I need to make sure that my people have a, have a time on there as well, because again, I don't feel like I can sit on the hammock or sit in my recliner if people are being neglected as well as things being neglected. So, oh, and Alex is just being rude. Do I ever enjoy football games living in Michigan? Alex, shame on you. Shame on you. The Wolverines did not lose this weekend. This was Ohio State weekend and the Wolverines did not lose. I will point that out to you. So just want to say that. Um, and, and Aaron says that she's the same way. Good. So mm -hmm. she, she kind of understands and other people do try to infuse and say, well, you have to just slow down. You have to relax. So mm -hmm. I think that we understand how other people tick. Did, have, did you ever, I mean, date myself a little bit. Did you ever do the personality inventory, the true colors personality inventory, Jamie? The color one? No, I've done, yeah. I've done a whole lot of them. Um, I'm a perfectionist. Um, okay. yeah. And so I do the brain dump because if I start an activity, I have to finish it. Yeah. And so if, but if I make a list and say, Hey, these are the things I'm going to do tomorrow. And I don't think about it as like a two week break. I said, these are the things I'm going to start on in the, in the morning in my mind. And if I write it down and I don't start on it, I don't have to finish it. I am a proponent. I can't, I can't even relax if I start a task and I don't complete it. Um, and so I have to be intentional about like, do I have really have enough time to finish this? Because mm -hmm. I know that if I start a test at three o'clock and I don't, and it's something at work and it's going to take me three hours, I'm going to be there until six o'clock until I finish it. So just try to, I don't know. My sister's like that though. She, she makes her schedule and her list and she has to finish them. Like, there, it doesn't even matter what you're thinking. If she does, she's not finished, she's still going to be working on that. Um, she's just, that's just the way she's made. I mean, and it makes her, I mean, it fits her personality. Like, I'm sure your family love you and they don't mind that you're working because that's you. And that's what yeah. you need to do. You know, they don't mind that. So, 
as long as you're putting them on your calendar, I think that's the best thing ever. Well, it, it, it's a slippery slope. So I'm curious, those people that are watching, if you've got suggestions, yeah. advice, guidance, or questions, throw them in the comments because I, I do struggle with this and I, I justify working so hard. I, I tell myself, I'm working so hard so that I can provide. I'm working so hard so that I can support a vacation down the road. I'm working so hard so that, but I miss the moments today. I, I honestly do. I mean, even this weekend, I anytime there was downtime, I found myself just trying mm -hmm. to find something else I could do. And that is a concern of mine. I know that there are teachers out there that feel the same way at times. They feel, especially in this virtual world that we're in, where they feel like they are just plugged in 24-7, that they feel the need to respond at 1030 at night to those emails. They feel the need to wake up early. This morning, when we were getting ready to go live, Google was down for a whopping 16 minutes. And the world, it was like the world shut down for a minute because 16 minutes without Gmail and the, and Google Drive and your Google Calendar. It's like people were freaking out. Like, what am I going to do with my time? I worked so hard to prepare things for everybody else. We lost sight of how to continue to move forward. So I say all that to say, people, it's, it's okay. Take some time for you. Whatever that might look like, find some time in the coming weeks for you. So Jamie, you said that you're working on writing a book and you've got like four or five chapters. What is what is the the concept that you're working on? Um, so uh, my second uh, volume of my book series is on self-reflection. Mm -hmm. And so um, every chapter is on a different topic, but I'm trying to write it so that teachers take a deep dive into um, just um, their practice. And so um, the current chapter that I'm writing is so relevant right now. Um, it's about how do you know that your virtual learning strategies, protocols are effective. Mm -hmm. And there's really not um, as much research being done. It's done with college students because we college has been online for a while, but for um, K-12, not so much. But what the research talks about is that most of the tasks that we do online take us two to three um, times more time than it took us to do when we were doing a face-to-face -face activity. So mm -hmm. if mm -hmm, so if you were preparing for a lesson, if a teacher normally took an hour, it may take them up to three hours to prepare that online uh, task for their students to do. But it also says it takes the children that much more time to do the task as well. And if a simple task would take 20 minutes. It could take uh, some children up to 60 minutes just to complete it. And so if you think about that, it's going to take at least double the amount of time for your students to navigate through just a regular, just mundane writing a paragraph or a summary of a story because they have to navigate to the platform to try to find the story and read it and digest it. And then because our children haven't learned to type, it takes them twice as long just to type a sentence when they could just write it on a sheet of paper. Um, if we are intentional about thinking about that time that it takes for students to complete those tasks online, I think we could find or get some of our time back because teachers are up until midnight, one o'clock in the morning, preparing these long lessons that we could probably do in chunks. Um, because if it's too difficult for the children to navigate, if they don't have that right mindset, they'll stop trying to do that and they'll disengage. Mm -hmm. And so, so we've got to figure out a way to get back um, that engagement. Um, and for some of the children, is they don't have three hours to spend on a task because they still have all those other things going around in their world. And when school is over at three o'clock, mom tells them, I, I got to take the trash out. I got to help fold the clothes. I have to help cook dinner. I got to take care of my younger brother and sister. And they don't have that time. And so um, I think if we can get... Um, more research around that or more people to understand just that time concept with the virtual learning. I think it'll be uh, such a powerful, um, uh, I don't even know how to say it, 
mindset, um, realization for um, educators around the world. I, th I think the whole time management concept is a powerful practice and shameless plug for Jeff Gargas, who released a, mm -hmm. a course in the, the Teach Better Academy last month on time management that you can still go access. So go check that out. Um, lots of practical advice for, for adults. But a Alex asked a question that kind of took me to where I wanted to go because this is it's interesting. I, I'd never heard about this research of things taking twice as long mm -hmm. online. Alex was asking, so if you have an hour with your students, should you only plan for something that would normally take 30 minutes in person? And I'm, I'm really wondering from the teacher perspective, a lot of teachers only have their students right now for half of the amount of time that they, that they had pre-pandemic. So they got their students for half the amount of time because they're either in this hybrid or fully remote environment. And now you're saying it takes teachers and students approximately twice as long to complete tasks. Wow. So what, what advice do you have for educators that are struggling with twice as long to get stuff done and only half of the amount of time? I want them to um, stretch that lesson. So what, how much time do they give their children to work in class if they're, they have an hour with them? Are you teaching that full hour? Or are you teaching 30 minutes in that hour and allowing your children to work? Um, children, are they actually interacting with their peers? Like, what is your process for um, learning information? If someone is just talking to you for like an hour, how much information did you really digest, understand? How did you check for understanding? I just think we need to do less um, just to make learning um, more deep for the children. We can go like a deeper dive instead of just skimming over um, the information just to say that we got it done. That's not good. Um, and I know that sometimes um, your district and your administrators are pushing you and saying you're not going fast enough. But would you rather your children learn the information and know it forever? Or do you want to just say that you got it done? Um, I just think that we need to rethink. I know that um, Ray talks about um, chunking information and teaching for like 15 minutes and letting children process We've got to really take into account that our children don't have all of the technological tools in their toolbox to know how to do those things. And just typing, scanning and uploading, just um, depending on the, the bandwidth of their internet, it may take them 40 minutes just to upload just one picture that you asked for. Um, just to be um, considerate, mindful. I don't know if you want to just say just grace. I hear a lot of people say, um, just give yourself some grace because you shouldn't be up to midnight either. You're not your best self. And you don't want your children to be um, anxious, frustrated, um, or any of those things because you really want to connect with them. Maybe talk with them and see how long it's taking them to do a task. Yeah, I, I think you, yeah, you opened up Pandora's box with this conversation. There's a lot of things that we could talk about here. The, the first point is defining what teaching is. Teaching does not mean talking. Teaching and talking are not the same thing. So when we say that you're teaching for 15 minutes and students are working for 45 minutes, that doesn't necessarily mean that you get a free pass to just lecture your students for 15 minutes and they all need to be staring at your computer screen. Because as I'm looking at the comments right now, I, I would venture to say the vast majority, if not all of the people that are watching this right now are multitasking and doing something else. If they're sitting there staring at their computer, just watching us and just listening to us, then they are probably in the minority. When we as adults sit back and listen to information or consume information, we're doing other things at the same time. So we need to have that same expectation for students. Number one, that uh, that when we're saying students, you have to be locked into everything I'm saying and staring at the screen. Come on, people. That's not real life. That's not how it's done. We learn through engagement. We learn through doing. So I think that's powerful. And also this idea of focusing on the focus, Ray calls it chunking and as, as you just referred to it, but identifying your priorities and staying true to those, going deep and, and not necessarily just covering a lot of things. I've said before, districts that are requiring teachers to just pick up the pace, you could save yourself a lot of times. Just have your teachers on the first day of school, read every single standard to your students. And then they're done for the year because they've covered it all. 
right? I mean, it, but it's not about covering standards. It is about making sure that students are learning and that they can take this stuff with them. That it's, that's the reason we have the summer slide. That's the reason we have learning loss over the holidays is because we just cover stuff as opposed to making sure that things are, are deep. So um, I, I think it's, it's so important for us to focus in on how we can get our students to learn things beyond vacations, beyond stuff. When I think of myself as a 43 year old adult, when I learn something new, I don't think, Ooh, how can I learn this so that I don't forget it over the weekend? I learn it so that I can master it, right? Same thing for our kids. The only stuff that our kids forget over holidays and over summer is the stuff that we just covered that they did not learn. Learning does not uh, come with forgetting. Otherwise, it's it's not learning. It's memorizing, which is short term. So, But again, I don't want to stand up on a soapbox and just preach. So I'll shut up on that. <laughs> so, so Jamie... Um, I want to just kind of wrap this up because I know we've been going, we've been talking now for 45 minutes, which is crazy. Time flies when I'm hanging out with Jamie. I told you, I've got an ink pen here. Whenever you're talking, I just start writing things down because I pick up so much amazing wisdom from you. You're just, you're killing it. So in this last week of 2020 for so many educators, can you just give everybody one last piece of advice? What do you want us to, to focus on right now? If you were to focus on the focus or say, here is a priority for educators. What should we be focusing on right now in this probably last week, eight, 10 days with, with our students of the school year? Um, connecting with your students, social and emotional learning. Find out what your children are thinking, what their mindset is. Um, some children are gonna be anxious because they're not gonna be able to turn the computer on and see your face every morning. And so uh, just, make the most of every moment during these last five days because for some children you are the highlight of their day and just remember that and uh, enjoy your break there you go figure out ways to connect and form those relationships because that's the stuff that's going to endure and the stuff that's going to make a lasting impact so figure out ways to to truly connect and if you have somebody um breathing down your back because you're spending too much time connecting with kids Remember, that is somebody that has lost connection with people. So just take that with a grain of salt. Um, I'm going to stop right now because people are saying, yay, good points. And I want to make sure that I get, I feel validated today too. So thank yes. you people for letting me preach yeah. a little bit. But this is really the, the Jamie Fowler White Show. And I, I just appreciate you being here so much, Jamie. Those people that might be new to the drop-ins, let me just remind you that drop-ins happen every single morning. Uh, this is the last week of it though. I'm, but I'm sure we can convince Ray, Jeff, Chad to bring it back again soon. Right, Ray? I know you're watching. We can definitely bring the drop-in back again, right, Ray? Because this is the highlight of every single day for me, right, Ray? Um, there's all kinds of other things happening uh, to tomorrow, Tuesday. We got Mastermind, something that I know that you are an active part of. Mastermind is an opportunity for leaders from around the world to come together, educational leaders, we get together, we talk. Tomorrow we're having some holiday fun. Um, we're gonna be wearing our, our ugly sweaters if we have yeah. them and playing some games and really connecting and getting to know each other. Uh, we talked about all the courses that are out there, the gift of grid thing that's happening right now. We've been mentioning this every single day, the daily drop-in. Um, if you've got great ideas for other educators to connect, go to educationblueprint.org and you can gift a grid or gift some amazing ideas. I also want to point out that two weeks from tomorrow, there might be an amazing special event taking place um, that might be about 12 times longer than you and I are connecting for right now, Jamie. It might nice. be filled with educators from around the world talking and sharing and connecting with literally thousands and thousands of dollars worth of free thing. Oh, 12 yeah, hours. 12 hour live. That's right. We just announced it. it on Friday. So put it in your calendars for December 29th. Um, all day long on the 29th. Well, I'm curious to see how many people are going to be sticking around the entire time uh, who will have it logged in and sharing their vacation with us or how many people are just going to be checking in throughout the day. We'll be sharing the, the full schedule with everybody real soon. But amazing educators from all around the world joining for that. And again, lots and lots and lots of freebies. So Alex, I know you want 24 hours. Alex, tell you what, you and I can hang out yeah. for another 24 hours. 
so once the team is done, you and I can just go live on Twitch or Twitter or, or something. We'll, we'll make sure that we, we cover this full 24 hours. No worries. We'll make it happen. So, so Jamie, again, thank you so much for, for hanging out with us and all of you in the comments, give this thing a like a heart, share this with your friends, remind them that the next four days they can join us for the drop in another, another amazing educator will be here tomorrow morning, just like Jamie. Great way to start your day. Great way to get your, your, your day focused on the stuff that matters most. So Jamie, thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I hope I get to see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It was my pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I got my All sweater. Right. Right. <laughs> All right. Good. All right, everyone. All right. Have an amazing right. day and uh, stay connected. Mm -hmm.